with the epidemic that is happening. Okay, but that kind of does tie into the next section. Combating hate and why protecting freedom of religion. Ah, here we go. As President, uh, President Biden has often says, a certain core uh, values bring us together as Americans, and one of them is like standing together against like hate, racism, bigotry, and violence that have like long uh, haunted our nation. Yet you funded the police, uh, Biden. You funded the police a lot more than like President Trump did. I'll continue on. We can and must can come together regardless of our backgrounds. Uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris has taken historical actions to stand uh, up to hate. Uh, President Biden has signed the Admitted like anti lynching Act and to finally make lynching a federal crime. It's surprising that like it's finally until like till now, then our the, the year of our Lord twenty twenty or whenever that bill was asked to finally make lynching a federal crime. Wow. Nepo says, uh, if I. I think if you like abolish capitalism, what would emerge in the uh, colonies would be like something entirely new. The result of input from my uh, colonizers and the natives is you get what I mean. I guess I'm like a hey, hey, colonizer, so I shouldn't like uh, be at the table uh, of like where they live and, and that sort of like the thing too. Well, okay, let me ask you this, too, ID. Israel. Palestinians have been arguing for, for the right to return. I'm in support of Palestinians' right to return, meaning right to return to their homes that they, they were living in for uh, years until the Nakba happened uh, in, in 1948. Uh, Nakba being an Arabic word for calamity. Because that's what the Palestinians want, is want to, like, have their own state, uh, for free Palestine, and want to, like, govern themselves, and not be, like, uh, living on their occupation, uh, or live in apartheid state, and want uh, self-determination as well, too, but also a right to return to their homes. And right now, while like the bombing and like uh, devastation is happening in Gaza as well too, also on the other side of like Israel, on the other part of Palestine, yeah, because Palestine's in three parts. Okay. It's different in living memory then. Alright. I guess I don't want to argue about this uh, either as well, too. Because, like, also, the existence of the state of Israel should not exist as well, too. I'll definitely say that. So, I guess we should have started the land back project back in, like, the 1700s or the 1800s. Even though, like, um, even though, like, uh, trauma like that, that can, like, be, like, passed down generationally. Ask black people about, like, slavery. Because uh, for black people, you only have to go back to uh, their great grandpas and then, like, they're back in slavery. Um, granted, like, goes back like, a lot longer for, like, indigenous people, but, like, story gets passed down. So, I don't know. Um, get to on. Hey, so yeah, lynching became finally became a federal crime. Um, he is like uh, hosted the United States, uh, the United We Stand Summit, uh, elevating the fight against like the hate of the highest like levels of our government. He signed COVID nineteen like Hate Crimes Act after A A N H P I. If you don't know that acronym, uh, Asian American Native Hawaiians Pacific Islanders uh, Americans uh, face a wave of like hate during the pandemic because it was the the Chinese flu, essentially. Um, he has uh, sought to increase uh, funding to improve prevention, reporting, and prosecution of hate crimes. And Democrats secured uh, the greatest like funding increase in the history for bolstering the like um, security of nonprofits, including the House of Workers. Uh, hold on, actually, how how long since the state of Hawaii has been a state? Because if I remember correctly, 
I think Hawaii was the one of the last states that became the states in the United States of America. And then Alaska. But it wasn't that long ago, right? Like World War II, Hawaii was not yet a state then. And when you look into the history of Hawaii, basically America invaded that place. They did a settler of colonialism then in Hawaii and like forced the queen of Hawaii or like the, I think it figured it was like matriarch or patriarch or if it was with king or queen, something like that, to whoever was like um, the leader of the Hawaiian people into like her home and like 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 self imprisoned her in her palace. And I think there was some shady stuff that was happening that like created Hawaii to be a state as well too. But that's why there's the distinction of like native Hawaiian. Cause how long was that? I'm gonna look this up right now, honestly. And then also Alaska, too. When did that become a state, too? 1959. How many years ago was that? That's like... It was it's like... 65 years ago. 65 years ago, Hawaii became a state. Before that, it wasn't a state. We're cool now. Uh, yeah, we're cool. Like two, three, five, eight. That's just like a like a thing we we'll probably agree to disagree on as well too. Is, but also like Puerto Rico as well too. It's a Commonwealth. Does Puerto Rico want to become a state? Does the Puerto Rican people, or do the Puerto Rican people would want to become like their own nation as well too? Independence as well too. That's happened with the United States of America, but I, I disagree with the reasons that, like, the United States of America became, like, a, uh, its own country. Um, uh, okay, I know. I'm, I'm curious. Alaska. So, like, the in order for, like, um, say, like, uh, Hawaii to became... And Alaska was, like, in January 3rd, in 1959. And Hawaii was August 21st, 1959. So within that same year, but it was like months apart. Um, so is... Yeah, but I should... That vote should be up with the Puerto Rican people. This is my point. So if like Puerto Rican people want to become independent, then they should become independent. If they want to still be part of the United States of America, then they should become a state. And yeah, that will be like a by kind of like majority rule and like a force of democracy onto like a people and that sort of thing too, because it's like a first past the post and that and, and that's a whole other thing as well too in its own and right. But it's like if that's what the Puerto Rican people, if we if what should happen to Puerto Rico should be up to the Puerto Rican people. Now I think District of Columbia should become a state because that's what like people of District of Columbia want to be. It's so weird how, like, yeah, there's a mayor of, like, District of Columbia, but for a lot of other things, too, is not handled by, like, the mayor or the city council of District of Columbia. It's, like, has to be done by the federal government as well, too. But if, like, if, like, there's statehood for uh, for the District of Columbia in Washington, D.C., then they will have, like, representation, and there'll be more representation for those people, and it's most likely going to be, like, a blue state as well, too. But also, it will uh, add two more senators as well, too. Uh, that's the one thing I gave Obama credit for, or was how he handled Puerto Rico. He let them, like, vote and said he will honor their vote. Uh, they happen to, like, vote to remain in colony. Ah, that's interesting. There are some Puerto Rican people that will wish for it, uh, that like are of the side of on wanting a independent Puerto Rico, um, and there are some people that want to like a statehood for Puerto Rico too. Oh, and that's the thing too. Where it's like I, yeah, I let I'm gonna let the Puerto Rican people decide if they want statehood or not, or want independence or not. So the same with old. Uh, I've heard them to be like properly represented, but I'm not Puerto Rican. Exactly, King. Yeah. Um, I, w I would think it would be in their best interest to be like um, uh, properly represented, but I also don't want to force my own own like uh, what I think is their best interest. Well, too, they should have like say what is their best interest. Well, too, and I think uh, like the Hawaiians, 
and as well as like Alaskans, like Native Alaskans, like Native Hawaiians, and that's where it's like in living memory as it were to that like Hawaii became a state and Alaska became a state, and then they. As I recall, the vote was uh, pretty close, too. Yeah, I imagine it would be pretty close. I mean, Brexit was pretty close. Um, I imagine that that kind of vote would be pretty close, too. And, like, Scotland and voting for independence in a way from the UK as well, too. That's really pretty close. But, like, I think it is quite narrow that, like, Scotland decided to remain be part of the UK. But if Scotland and Wales want to like uh, become independent as though, and Northern Ireland becomes independent too, or be absorbed part of like uh, Ireland too, the Ireland unification as well too. If the people decide that, then that, and then that's what they want. Um. But anyway, so like I kind of like noticed the uh, the previous conversation about like what if like uh, native people want to kick uh, white people out of like uh, the United States uh, off of Turtle Island some of the time, kind of like they remind me it's like oh yeah it wasn't that long ago that Hawaii became a state too and now I wonder if, like when uh, the United States of America first landed on Hawaii because we did want Hawaii uh, as like a, we wanted military bases on Hawaii because of how strategic it is to have military uh, bases on Hawaii and if you're the first one there and to secure uh, Hawaii as like military bases something like that then you have advantages in the war like there was like a board game and uh, access and allies I want to say I don't know what the name of the board game is but like my older sibling and my older brother were kind of like played it before and they realized by like turn six it's just like you're going to like it, it, by turn six you have to like secure Hawaii or else you won't win the game it's it was meta in that game basically um Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm like, uh, I read this part as well, too. So I'm going to continue on right here. But I just like, uh, 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 but the, knowing what the little I know about like the history of Hawaii, something like that, kind of like what's like tangential to the topic about like set of colonialism and what like, with the previous section of like the tribal nations as well, too. So continue on. Um, President Biden has like a strong and unequivocal like uh, voice uh, speaking out against like rising anti Semitism in, in America. Uh, um,. Uh, the administration uh, releases the first ever like the national strategy to like counter like anti-Semitism, outline a whole uh, a whole of a society effort, including unprecedented uh, coordinated and bold actions uh, across government agencies and called to action for Congress, state and local governments, companies, tech technological platforms, and others. As part of that, like a part of that strategy, the administration clarified that the first time in writing that Title VI of like Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits like certain forms of anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and related like related discriminations, including discriminations by national origin and federal funded like programs for and activities. That's interesting. Um, and President Biden continued to take bold actions to combat anti-Semitism on college campuses. He also prioritized like fighting anti-Semitism and abroad, er, abroad by like appointing um, Deborah like Lischit. Um, I think that's how he pronounced it. I could be wrong though. Uh, as U.S. special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism, a ambassador level position. Oh, I'm okay. I'm worried. I wonder at what point that like uh Brian, uh, this document's going to mention israel and then when talk about anti-semitism we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll get mm. yeah, anti-genocidal uh, uh, protests and anti-semitism yeah the same thing yeah i wonder yeah i kind of like got that like, vibe from this document too kane yeah um continuing on uh, there we go mm. all right uh president biden knows that islam so has no place in our society Hey, something, something I think about like when I idolized Eric Nelson's this selection and from like death for five thousand years where David Gray says uh, barter economy only makes sense to you and imagine a group of people appear out of nowhere with like random assortments and like, recourse and they need to like figure out how to exchange. It's easy to imagine a direct democracy where everyone is like an adult educated person. I guess so. Um, okay, continue on. Across this, like, administration, administration, and, uh, 
HZs are taking uh, uh, administration, administration. I said administration, administration, but uh, across the administration agencies, that's the word, agencies. Agencies are taking action to like fight Islam slowly and so import Muslim Americans. Uh, his administration is developing the first ever United, uh, United U.S. national strategy to combat a, 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 a U.S. national strategy to counter. Uh, to counter Islamophobia and related forms of bias and discrimination, including hate against Arab, Sikh, and South Asian uh, Americans. He is the first president in history to recognize the International Day to Combat Islamophobia, and his administration uh, released a dear colleague uh, letter reminding schools, and including institutions, and like higher learning and of their legal obligation under the Title VI to like, address discrimination, including harassment based on race, color, or national origin, including discrimination against students who are and are perceived to be Muslim, Arab, Sikh, South Asian, Hindu, or Palestinian based on the shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics. Ah, they mention... Okay, later the two fifty five AD. Yes, I am the bearded non-binary pal. Uh, yeah, go get food. Mention Palestinian here. Not they do anything about the genocide. <laughs> I see that's what she can. Uh, okay, uh, moving. On. Okay, continue on. Uh, again and again, Trump has like shown uh, us uh, who he is on the issue of hate. He rubs soldiers uh, with and encourages white supremacists, even like launching his like 2024 campaign with a meeting with, with uh, uh, white supremacist, anti-Semitic, Holocaust denial, Nick Fuentes. Oh God, I know about Nick Fuentes. Ah, <sighs> that piece of shit. He called white supremacists and uh, openly anti-Semitic like a Charlottesville protest is very fine people. He reportedly thinks Hitler did like, some good things. He's echoed his like uh, hateful like uh, rhetoric about like immigrants, including that they're poisoning the, the blood of our country as well too. Um, I think that the blood of our, of our country, the United States of America, was poisoned to begin with because like I have my issues of the creation of the United States of America during its inception. Uh, continue on. He will reinstate his like this uh, disgraceful uh, Muslim ban if he's like elected. Continuing as his long history of uh, Islamophobia and his fuel anti-Asian hate. Um, as the AANHPI community faced a spike in hate crimes around the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, it was like a serious thing that happened and all because like, yeah, and yeah, no, uh, Trump did a few of all that, like, uh, race and uh, bigotry. Um, but yet the Democrats, at least as far as policy, not against like the people, but against the government of China have like, do have like a fear of China as well too, because like, well, they always have to have like the fight against somebody as well. It was like the USSR during the, during the Cold War, but now it's like kind of like China because like China is challenged, the government of China is trying to dominate, uh, it's trying to like, compete with like, uh, USA's like, um, hegemony and USA's dominance. But that, that's not necessarily a hatred of the Chinese people. Uh, anyway, continue on. Uh, Democrats condemned the decades-long campaign to deny like the Muslim communities and will like end policies that like target uh, American Muslims as secure threats. Um, and yet they're like they're aiding and abetting like Israel's uh, genocide against the Palestinian people. But I guess that's across the world, and Israel's our ally. Blah. Continue on. We will can combat hate crimes and white nationalist terrorism. Sorry if you hear like the ice cream truck outside. I have my window open. I'm it, maybe it's just only bothering me as well too. Uh, continue on. We will prioritize the investigation of hate crimes against trans and non-binary people, and we will continue to increase security of uh, like uh, houses of worship. Biden deeply believes everyone should be able to like practice their faith without fear. Yeah, I know. I agree there. It's just like, um, do we got. In order to, you just gotta like improve society as a whole to fight against like big and something like that. Um, I it's gonna, I am, it's gonna just be really tall order for anyone like to do. Okay, I see how they written this as well too for like this last two three paragraphs and go into the next section. But can you know? That's a, that's why Democrats will protect the First Amendment right to exercise eyes of a religion for everyone and will maintain separation in church and state. Uh, again, like I said, uh, to actually fully separate church and state, some of it, you got to get rid of the United States of America because, like, they cite the uh, uh, cite the law to like the genocide of the United States of America. The discovery doctrine was like cited as well too, and that discovery doctrine was like a bully pulpit from the Pope. 
in contrast, uh, the Trump administration attacked the religious freedoms by... Yeah, I'll agree. I can tax the churches as well, too. Um, could you, you know, in contrast, the Trump administration attacked the religious freedom by demonizing its own faiths and preferring others. Well, most of the like, presidents honestly do that as well, too, because um, it is, um, many presidents don't like to talk about their faith unless they're Christian. I mean, God and trust, and God we trust is in uh, printed on our money. And, like, the, in the line of the Pledge of Allegiance, that's still a whole thing, honestly. Hey, we were taught to, like, to, to recite the Pledge of Allegiance when we were five years old, starting at five years old, starting in kindergarten, starting in first grade, something like that. Did we, do we even know what the word allegiance means? And yet people outside the United States of America, when they see, like, kids recite the Pledge of Allegiance, so that's which brings up to, like, the, the separation of church and state, something like that, there is a line under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. And, but yet, yeah, like, the separation in church and state, but, like, say, uh, God we trust on our money, and say, under God and the Pledge of Allegiance. And yet, yeah, it's, it's saying the, like, saying the, swearing the oath and, yeah, in, it, yeah, it was only in our money since, like, 1957. Yeah, you're right, Kane. It was never always on our money, too. So, separation in church and state, but it's totally fine if you're a Christian. Because, like, uh, the Christianity in this country, something like that, feels... Normal feels like the default. Continue on. We will advocate for like religious freedom across the world, and we will continue to honor both religious freedoms and and other civil rights, and not put them at war with one another. This critical work is led by Ambassador Rashan Hassan, the first Muslim to serve as ambassador at the large for at the large for international religious freedoms. If that the noise that's up and outside, which I think is just like kids playing with like pop rocks or something like that, or pop cats or something like that, um. If that gets like too much, I'm going to close the window because I don't know if you are hearing that as well too. But like, it definitely is like bothering me. Um. Hey, but that's, it's a sort of thing that like reminds me of like tokenism or just like you know. Okay, this actually is bothering me. I think I'm going to close the window. Um. Um. But it's kind of like a, it, it, like the previous section that I read on this document. Hire more women guards. It's like, look, we're not being like bigoted towards Muslim people. We hired a Muslim. Um, so I'll continue on. We will continue to, but yeah, like you kind of like have to like tout that as well too. But yeah, it also comes off of tokenism as well too. Continue on. We will continue to recognize uh, faith communities and acts of services, as, uh, which are the critical pillars of their communities. That's one reason why President Biden reestablished the White House Office of Faith-Based and uh, Neighborhood Partnerships, so that the government can like work better with like a faith community groups and like serve people in need. My best friend is back. What do you mean? You never met him? Even Biden said something about, like, oh, I grew up, with, I hang out with some, like, black people in my 20s. Even gave them cringy, like, uh, like names, as were, too. And this is President Biden, who, like, uh, from in the 50s or 70s, okay, I'm closing the window. In the 50s or 70s, like, was against busing. Outro video time! Yes, this time I'm actually making an outro video instead of just having text on here. So, if you like the video... Press the button to give it a like. Helps out the video as well, too. And if you dislike the video, that button is there, too, as well. Oh, doesn't matter. Helps the algorithm and helps the video out of the way. Uh, you can also leave a comment if you disagree with something that I said, or you just want to say, hey, I like this video, or something like that. That will help out the video as well, too. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as well, too. Um, this, yep, getting those subs numbers up always helps as well, too. And uh, also, don't forget to share around the video, too, like, always your friends uh, all your enemies on the social medias and be like hey check this out or listen to this or will you check out this person that's uh, rambling about so many different things yeah that will help the video as well too and also over on the sides of my face right now or covering face as well too should be like the buttons for like over you know, over here for like to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also social justice out me if you haven't checked out that like uh the 
a channel. It's a weekly uh, live stream show, the YouTube live stream show that I, I, I'm i sitting around with a bunch of my friends, a bunch of other anarchists and leftists and socialists to talk about like current events, news, uh, politics, feminism, anarchism, socialism, communism, and various other things, even cats, even like pop culture as well too. And over on like the of here should be uh, some videos as well too for like that I recommend you check out as well. Or it's over here. I don't know. It, around my face, there should be those buttons that you can click on as well too. All right. Thank you for watching.